Query processing is a very important factor in how your workload runs. In this episode, Kate Smith joins us to tell us about query processing and how intelligent query processing makes your workloads run even faster. This week on Data Exposed. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed. Today, I'm joined by our repeat guest, Kate Smith, a program manager on the Azure SQL team. Kate, thanks so much for coming back on the show today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me on. Awesome. Great to have you on. And, you know, when you came on before, you did a really great series about Elastic Jobs, and we'll be sure to include a link to that in the description for our viewers. But today we're going to be talking about query processing. And I think this is a really great topic, a topic that we probably don't talk about enough. Um, but I'd love if you could just kind of give us an overview of like what good query processing even means and why does it matter? Right. Um, that, that's a great question, Anna. So uh, query processing, or QP, as I like to refer to it, is um, something that when it's going well, you don't even think about it. Um, you don't even know what's happening. You don't want to think about it. Ideally, it just everything is smooth and it's all good. Um, when but what it, what it does in terms of um, how it benefits you to have a good query processor is it expands the capability of your database. So sometimes there are queries that would not return if uh, they were executed as written without any optimization or any um, efficiency hacks. Um, and by hacks, I just mean tricks that the optimizer does to make things run more quickly. Um, so it, it allows queries to, to execute that maybe wouldn't execute in an appropriate time or finish at all if, if we didn't have good optimization and execution. It um, uses the resources of the database effectively. It allows queries to run um, in parallel in appropriately sized um, amounts of resource bubbles so that they won't, um, so they'll have the resources they need, but they one query won't starve out the other queries or prevent other queries from executing. It reduces the amount of manual intervention that you have to do. So I've heard of all sorts of tricks that people have done where they have kind of a large gnarly query and they're trying to get it to complete or trying to get it to complete in the amount of time. And there's lots of tricks that that I've heard of people doing, but a good optimizer is going to reduce the the amount of time you'll have to spend doing that sort of manual stuff and allow you to just run your queries and enjoy good performance. It will also adjust to changing conditions to some degree. So as if you have a query that when it's first executed just gets a small number of rows, but then the tables grow and you re-execute that same query, ideally the query would execute again with a slightly different optimization to account for the larger number of rows. So that's the, the sort of long and short of what a good query processor does and why it matters. Awesome. Yeah. And it, it seems like from your great explanation that, you know, this thing is kind of doing the work underneath the hood, figuring out how your queries are actually going to be run and in a big part are going to actually impact the performance. Now, when we talk about query processing, what is it? What does it actually do and, and how does it compare to intelligent query processing, you know, which we've heard about before and talked about on the show before, which is also available? Right. Great question. Uh, query processing versus intelligent query processing. So query processing, what it does is it will reorganize your query, uh, create a plan um, uh, that says sort of this is how I'm going to execute the query then it will choose specific execution strategies, execute on those, et cetera. Now, um, query processing in general is all that, that planning and all that stuff is based off of a set of underlying assumptions and uh, aggregate data statistics about the query. So um, what can, or about the data, and what can happen is that sometimes there's an abrupt change as the data size changes, and it does that adaptation we talked about, that, that there'll be an abrupt change to the way a query is executed, and that can cause perform a noticeable performance difference. It can also have a plan that chooses an execution strategy based on sort of a, uh, a, an appropriate guess based on statistics that, that don't actually match the reality of the query. And so then those two things can get out of sync, and that can also cause performance issues. 
what intelligent query processing does is it takes all those good parts of query processing and it enhances those with specific strategies designed to make transitions between plans or mistakes where we, you mean, not that the query processor made a mistake, but like I said, we have to use assumptions. And when those assumptions don't match reality, we can actually now adjust to, oh, actually, this is the reality and make make the assumption part play less of a role in the query processing and make the actual reality of the query come more to the forefront. And when you have more accurate data, then you can have a better execution plan, a better execution and faster query with fewer surprises and sort of a smoother transition between plans. Awesome. That's really cool. I think that's a really great explanation. So we have the query processor, which is doing the processing, the optimizing, and intelligent query processing is really just taking it one step further. Now, when you say intelligent, I start to think, you know, machine learning is being used. Maybe this is some sort of AI model. You know, where is this data that we're using coming from? Is that something folks should be concerned about? No. Uh, so all, the, all intelligent query processing is doing, it's not doing like AI type training or anything like that. What it does is it takes your workload and it looks at how things are doing with your workload and makes adjustments based on that. So some features of intelligent query processing will kick in only on subsequent executions of a query. So you execute it at one time, uh, like let's say memory grant feedback, you execute it one time and oh no, we didn't give the query, the, the query enough memory and it spilled the disk and that's a very costly operation. So we'll remember that for next time and we'll give the query more memory. It doesn't have anything to do with anybody else's data set. We're not sharing any of that with anybody, anything like that. So it's gotcha. all, all of that stuff is just based on what you've executed and how your queries are doing. Okay, that's that's really great to know. And you know, I've heard uh, you know Pedro Lopes talk about this before, and he says you know the greatest thing about intelligent query processing is like you just run faster, which I think is awesome. It's a great story. Now, how do I know if you know this is working, if it's in action, if it's enabled, what do I have to do? Right, so um, the the way that these features are turned on, turned off, et cetera, um, if you are using the latest compatibility level of um, your database and you have got the latest stuff, you get these features for free. You don't have to do anything to enable them or turn them on. There are specific ways for each feature to turn them off that's um, that's in our documentation. But if you want them, you just increase your compatibility to the latest and you get them. And you don't have to do anything else. And you might notice a difference in your workload uh, right away. Wow, that's pretty cool. Uh, so Kate, you know, this has been a really great succinct session to kind of understand query processing, the importance and how intelligent query processing works. If you had to summarize or give people some advice on how to think about this, uh, how would you do that? Well, I would say intelligent query processing takes the awesome work that query processing already does. It adds the ability to learn, um, the ability to adapt. Um, it already adapted a little bit. It adapts a little bit better with the intelligent query processing features, and it enhances the efficiency of the operations that it's doing, the way it chooses to do them. So learn, adapt, and enhance efficiency. All three of those things, when you take them together, you you come up with a, a formula for better plans and fewer surprises, which is what we want for making your workload better in the long run. Awesome. I love that. Better plans and uh, less surprises. <laughs> That's always good. And better performance is what we're always going for. You know, Kate, thanks so much for coming on the show today. Uh, I believe you've written a series of blog posts kind of on this topic as well. So we'll be sure to put that in the description for our viewers to go learn more. Um, again, thanks for joining us on the show. For our viewers, thanks for watching. If you like this show or episode, please give it a like, give us a comment on what you're doing with intelligent query processing or how you're seeing its effects on your workloads. And we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed.